My name is Wesley and welcome to Maker Dungeon, the channel where I make stuff in the filthy spider infested rat trap where I live and sometimes get work done. This channel is going to be all about 3D printing, 3D modeling, DIY electronics, electronic music, derpy robots, or whatever else holds my attention long enough to make a video about. We're going to be giving these projects away to friends and other content creators, some of whom asked for this stuff and some of whom definitely did not. Now I've done my fair share of 3D printing vases and other random knickknacks, the same as anyone, but generally I like to print big, fast, grainy, and functional parts. In order to do that, it's important to design your model around the size of your nozzle and to plan ahead for variable settings. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that, as well as how to do something else I see people asking about all the time online, which is how to combine a vase mode print with a basic infill base print in the same print job. So come along, friends to the computarium! So, my friend Hana asked me to make her a funnel, which is a very easy shape to model, and it gives us the opportunity to go over some of the concepts we discussed earlier. Right now I'm in Fusion 360, which is a powerful bit of free CAD software, and if you haven't heard of it, I definitely recommend that you Google it, download it, and check it out. So let's start a new sketch, and we'll just go ahead and grab any random plane, and we'll uh, make a center line that'll form the center axis of uh, a revolve that'll form the body of our funnel. So here we go. I'm just going to arbitrarily choose 65 mil and then we'll make another uh, perpendicular line that will give us uh, a place for our spline to attach to when we uh, form the the you know profile of the funnel. So let's get a little something here for the spout and since this is going to be the radius of our spout it doesn't need to be super big. Let's say 7.5 millimeters that seems appropriate okay so now we can go into the sketch menu and grab a spline where'd you go spline here we are and we'll just put maybe two or three uh, control points on that spline and now we've basically got um, the profile for our funnel so we can take a little bit of time and we'll make it look just the way we want to and I'm gonna sort of hustle through this part but if you're doing this project on your own you can take all the time that you need but anyway so now that we've got a, a functional profile we'll select all of our our faces and um, we'll perform a revolve operation so you go into create revolve and then we select our center axis and bam we're good to go now at this point if we decide we don't really like the way our funnel looks we can go back into this sketch and we can play around with it and it'll update that uh, 3D model that we've got as soon as we exit the sketch. So if I want to make it a little skinnier, great, we're good to go. Okay, so this looks like a satisfactory funnel to me. Again, you could take a little bit more time with this step if you wanted, but let's keep moving. So next I'd like to make another sketch along the bottom of the object that we've got. I'm going to take a circle, start it in that origin point, and unfortunately it won't let me just define that circle as being the same as uh, the circle formed by the bottom of our object. So what I'm gonna do is take this circle and define it as being tangent to um, the circle formed by the bottom of the model and now even if we get rid of our body we can see that we've got a circle that's locked in place. Great! Okay, so now let's add a feature. We're gonna add a little uh, handle for this thing so that it can be conveniently hung up kind of like a funnel that you might find in a store. So we'll get a line and arbitrarily define it at say final okay. part of this little handle. And next we'll just get a line here. And it's not done because it doesn't really matter a whole ton. Okay. So let's define this thing. Uh and no, it seems good. Alright, so let's um form an arc. So we've got a second part and like this here. So we just find these sequence here. Okay, so really kind of that'll do far away. So I want these sequence sequences, boom. And then play this a little bit to uh find shape this handle. So I kind of have a place and sort of just like choosing a little satisfy less. So this is pretty fine, I'll still say quickly. Um and we'll just say if you find this. And because we need to that way, if you find something to be, yeah, that's exactly. Okay, so now let's highlight all the lines and we have a sketch and mirror. Then we'll select a mirror line, which is exactly right here. And actually, we'll just select it to mirrors, we'll be like those. Now we'll use them as a mirror line, and bam, we're good to go. So we've got a nice little profile that we can use to put a handle on our funnel. The only thing is, if we just grab these faces and extrude them straight up, you can see that we've got a little bit of a, a gap in between the body of the funnel and our handle. So we don't want that. What we're going to do is select all these faces and then do an extrude and I'm just gonna arbitrarily say uh, yeah two millimeters that seems good we don't want to cut though we want a new body and it'll become clear in a moment why we're not just joining it to the existing body okay so clearly we've got extra material here let's go ahead and trim it off by using a combine operation so we've got 
the funnel over here, and we've got the handle. Naming things will help us keep them straight. And we're going to go modify, combine. Our target body is this because it's the thing we want to remove material from. Our tool body is this because it's the thing that we're uh, using to cut away material. And we'll do a cut. And we want to keep those tools because we don't want the main body of our funnel to disappear. Bam. So now we've got, um, when we uh, hide the funnel itself, we get just the handle. Looks perfect. Okay. So from here, we want to hollow the funnel out a little bit, but since we're going to be using vase mode for part of this print, we want part of the model to be um, solid because our slicer will handle um, hollowing it out. It'll only render the outermost perimeter, but the parts of the, vo uh, the model, such as this handle, that are not appropriate for vase mode need to uh, be done in a uh, you know, traditional printing method. So what we can do is go ahead and take our funnel and we'll split it into pieces based on the different uh, techniques that we're going to be using for, for 3D printing it. So let's do uh, a split body operation on this main funnel and our splitting tool is going to be this surface formed here by the top of our handle. Great, so now we've got three distinct pieces. We've got um, the funnel base and then we've got the handle, and then we've got the funnel itself. Great, so let's go ahead and ignore everything except for the funnel base for now. So for this, we actually do want to hollow it out because it's not going to be printed in vase mode. So what we're going to do is go to Modify and um, Shell, and then basically we want to select the faces that are going to be open after we shell this thing. So I'm going to hold down Control and select both of these faces, and next we're going to select how thick the shell is. And if you're wondering how thick we're going to make the shell, well, we're going to use a little bit of uh, hard one experience to choose a number that is not arbitrary. So I know that I'm printing with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle right now. And when you're printing with a big nozzle, it's really good to um, use a, a line thickness that your printer can can render in a really nice way. So basically I know my printer likes to print at about 1.2 times the diameter of the nozzle. So let's go into our calculator. We're going to take our nozzle size which is 0 0.8 and we're going to multiply it by 1.2 and that gives us 0.96 which is an ideal thickness for a single trace. So let's say 0.96 BAM. And if we were making a slightly thicker wall, I would want to use multiples of 0.96 uh, so that every trace that is contained in that wall would be a nice, thick, strong trace that's going to come out looking good. Okay, so now we've got our handle, and the reason why we didn't combine our handle with this before is because that shell operation would have also shelled our handle, and we don't want that. So now let's take our handle and the funnel base and combine them. So we're going to say modify, combine, we're going to say, sure, our target body is this, our tool body is that. Oops, it doesn't really matter. Tool bodies, boom. And this time, instead of a cut, we're going to do a join. And um, we're not going to keep the tools because we don't want there to be duplicates of those bodies around. Okay, so we've got our funnel and our handle. And the reason we're leaving this funnel as a solid object is because, again, our slicer is going to render only the outermost perimeter. So that way, um, when these processes are printed back to back, we'll end up with just, you know, a single uh, continuous shape that is, you know, hollow all the way down. And uh, now we can save these uh, by selecting them and clicking Save as STL. And then we'll open them up on our slicer and go from there. I'll see you in Simplify 3D. Okay, so here we are in Simplify 3D, and we're going to import the models that we just saved as STLs from Fusion 360. So here we go. We'll just select them both. And when we drop them in, you'll notice that they're not uh, sitting directly on top of each other. So what we need to do is align them by origin. Okay, so we're going to select both models. And if memory serves, the command we want is Control-O. Mm. Okay, that was clearly wrong. So let's go into uh, Edit, Align, Selected, Model Origins. It looks like there isn't a hotkey for that. Okay, so now they're sitting directly on top of each other. And of course, you can see just like in Fusion 360, we've got a hollowed out shell, and then we've got the rest of it that is not shelled yet. So what we're going to do is take um, our existing process um, that you know I've already used before, and I know that it works okay. And we're gonna uh, hit Control C and Control V to copy it. And I'll just go ahead and rename this one Vase Mode. Okay, so 
we want um, the settings of this process to apply only to the bottom part. So let's go to uh, select model and we'll say uh, we'll deselect funnel and we'll apply that only to the handle. Okay, and then for vase mode, we're going to do the same thing, select model and we're going to deselect the handle and we're going to apply this process only to the the rest of the funnel. And now I'm just going to go into um, layer and choose single outline corkscrew printing mode or vase mode and I'm also going to get rid of these first layer settings um, because we don't want uh, the first layer of our vase mode to like you know behave as though it's printing directly on the print surface and beyond that there's really not that much else we have to do let's go ahead and click prepare to print to see how this is going to work continuous layer by layer printing and we're going to select all of the processes and now let's have a, a look at what happens here okay so as you can see here we've got a small problem our top and bottom layers are are wanting to render themselves now that's something that you might not see in Cura but you do see it in Simplify 3D so let's go into our layers top uh, top solid layers and bottom solid layers are going to be zero um, for our second vase mode process and now let's try that again so we've solved the first problem but looking at this preview you can see there's one more thing we need to correct when the traces connect from the body of the funnel to the handle, it looks like there's a little bit of a break in the trace, which is kind of why you always want to take a look at the preview. So in order to correct that and get a better looking first layer, let's hop back into Fusion 360 and we'll correct this by highlighting the vertices between the funnel base and the handle and we'll press F to create a fillet operation and we'll just drag them out and round that off a little bit about 10 mil ought to do it and then we'll export those the same as before and hop back into to uh, simplify 3d and looking at that preview again we can see that it looks a lot better there's a little bit of a break there still but it's much less pronounced and it should make for a much better bottom layer well let's go ahead and send it to the printer here's a time lapse from my octo print rig i used petg for this print which is heat resistant and allegedly food safe but PETG does have a habit of overheating a little bit when you have layers with very little material like the top of the funnel so you might see that that happened a little bit I might choose a different material if I were to do this project again but overall they came out decent enough great job everybody now it's time for the fun part we're gonna give away our beautiful funnels to Hana Lee creator of closedloopcooking.com a sustainable food blog link in the description now let's cut to some mind-blowing reaction footage. Hey Hana, I made you these funnels that you asked for. Are you ready? I'm very ready. Thanks Here's two look. funnels. Nice. Yep. <laughs> he told me to play it cool, but these are really great. Thanks. I'm glad you like wow. them. I'm glad you like them. They should be able to stand up to a washing machine. Nice job. A washing? <laughs> Do you have one of those? A dishwasher? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, either or. Okay, well. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Hana, for appearing on this episode of Maker Dungeon. Thanks, Leslie. <laughs> well, thanks for sticking with me, guys, and I'll see you next time on Maker Dungeon.